Welcome to the Round 14 Waffle Wrap. I'm your host, Frizz Ferguson. Well, this week we had three games, two at the normal Saturday afternoon time slot and one on Sunday afternoon. Subiaco hosted Peel Thunder at Medibank Stadium in what was a tight battle for the first three quarters. The Lions led by just one point at quarter time and held a five point advantage at both half time and three quarter time before George Hampson emerged as the match winner, kicking the last four goals of the game and setting up a 26 point win. Hampson also had 21 touches and seven inside 50s, while Subiaco captain Kyle Horsley was again dominant in the midfield, racking up 32 disposals and kicking a goal. In the other fixture on Saturday afternoon, Swan Districts hosted Claremont at Steel Blue Oval. The Tigers came out roaring in the first quarter, kicking four goals to two to take a 12-point lead into quarter time. That trend continued in the second as the Tigers piled on another four goals. However, Ryan Davis kept Swans in the game with this goal late in the second quarter to reduce the margin to 19 points at the main break. Swans tried hard to close the gap in the third term with three goals, but the Tigers continued their form, kicking another four of their own. Then in a tough and tight last quarter, Swans kicked the first two goals to get within 11 points, but Claremont did well to steady, kicking three of the game's last four goals to win by 26 points. Interestingly, Swan Districts have not won consecutive games against Claremont since round seven, 2010. But moving on to Sunday, and South Fremantle took on West Perth, with the Falcons desperate for a win to keep their finals hopes alive. Both teams came out firing on the first and piled on six goals each for an even scoreboard at quarter time. West Perth added another four goals in the second quarter and picked up their defensive pressure to hold the Bulldogs to just one goal. And that trend continued in the third with the Falcons kicking away to score another five goals and extend their lead to 45 points. Ashton Hams gave the home crowd something to cheer about in the last quarter with this absolute specky. But West Perth ran out comfortable winners by 62 points, keeping their hopes of a top four finish and back-to-back -back flags alive. And now for a look at our individual performances. And this week's Amy Waffle Player of the Week is Ryan Neitz from Claremont Football Club who gathered 30 possessions, had four inside 50s and a goal as Claremont downed the second place Swans on their home turf. And our Powerade Colts young gun is Peel Thunder's Kyle Shanahan from Collie Junior Football Club. Kyle gathered 26 disposals, laid four tackles and kicked two goals as Peel Thunder toppled Subi in the Colts by 37 points. Last night, East Perth bowed out of the Foxtel Cup competition, losing to Williamstown by 24 points. The Royals' Josh Hill was great with three goals, while big man Paul Johnson was fantastic around the ground with 16 disposals, six tackles and four marks. West Perth head to Melbourne for the grand final against Williamstown on July 22nd. With the Waffle Venues hosting the Landmark Country Championships next week, we're joined by WA Country Football General Manager, Joe Georgiadis. Welcome. G'day Fridge, thanks for having us. Um, now this year marks the 50th year of this uh, championships. Um, can you tell us a bit about the history? Yeah, look, the first Country Week Championships was held in Perth way back in 1965 and this year marks the 50th year of the championships being held in Perth. So country players love coming down from their league, uh, playing lots of footy and having a really good time in Perth. And what's the format? Where, where are the games being played this year? This year we have three senior divisions and one Colts division. Um, three of the four divisions will be playing round robin format, as you can see. Uh, the Colts will be held in Mandra at Bendigo Bank Stadium, whilst the other three divisions will be held at the Metro Grounds in, um, in Perth. And where are some, uh, well, who are some of the players and, and teams that we should look out for? Good question, Frizz. Uh, we always, or our leagues always keep their teams as a pretty tightly held secret, so we ask for them to be submitted on Monday, so we won't really know the best players until Monday, but you can always assume that Peel, South West are going to have really strong teams, um, and the Geraldton Footy League always throws up a few surprises too. So something to look forward to there. Are there any other special events happening to mark the 50th year? 
Yeah, one thing that we've done this year is we've named our best ever 50 year team of Country Week and um, I'm sure you can see there lots of familiar names that have been great of country footy and guys that have come down and performed really well over Country Week in Perth. So congratulations to those guys and for those people that want the fixtures they're available at landmark.com.au. Thank you very much for your time, we're looking forward to it. Thank you. It's NAIDOC round at the Waffle this weekend where we honour the contribution Aboriginal people have made to our great game. This week each club will wear a specifically designed jumper like this one from West Perth. We will be featuring the jumpers from all nine clubs as well as the meanings behind them on social media so make sure you check them out. And the fixtures for NAIDOC round include East Fremantle versus Perth at East Frio Oval, East Perth take on Peel Thunder at Medibank Stadium, West Perth against Swan Districts at Arena Joondalup and Claremont versus South Fremantle at the showgrounds. This week's winner of the Waffles Selfie competition is Alan Steele with his dad at Lathlane Park. To register for your chance to win the ultimate grand final experience, visit the Waffle Facebook page and send in your photo via the competition tab. Thanks for tuning in this week. See you at the Waffle this weekend for NAIDOC Round.